In the last stream, we were working on setting up this new area of the base over here with our Wither Builder and Crusher from Industrial Foregoing, allowing us to automatically build and kill Withers without having to do any of the fighting ourselves and giving us the opportunity that hopefully we'll take advantage of in this episode to fully automate the production of Nether Stars. Now, we're almost there. We've done like 90% of the work required to automate the production of Nether Stars. The only things that we're going to need to do in today's stream are optimize the Wither Skeleton Spawner, which between streams I have moved uh, right at the end of the last episode. We placed it down inside of the Dreadful Dirt Box, but we placed it too high up, so it wasn't spawning any Wither Skeletons. But between streams, I've gone ahead and moved it down, so it's now in the floor. If I break this dirt real quick, it's uh, right there. The reason I've placed a block of dirt beneath it is that it looks like the vector plate isn't blocking out all of the light. And so uh, if I don't have this dirt here, then uh, the mobs seem to be spawning slower on the actual dreadful dirt. So I've put a bit of dirt there just to make sure that it is indeed uh, pitch black in here. But what we should be able to do today is upgrade that wither skeleton spawner to make it spawn more wither skeletons. We should be able, hopefully, to upgrade our mob masher with the beheading upgrade to ensure that we get more wither skeleton skulls for every wither that's killed. Uh, right now we have 14 and that's just been going between streams. Ideally, we're going to get one head per wither skeleton uh, going forward. I think that is possible once we have 10 beheading upgrades. And then the final piece of the puzzle is, of course, automating soul sand, which, as we've said previously, really shouldn't be too difficult because we have our bulk haunting setup from Create, and that's going to allow us to automatically turn any sand that we have into soul sand. Then we can send all of the soul sand and all of the Wither Skeleton Skulls up to the Wither Builder, and at that point, we will have successfully set up an automatic Nether Star system. All we have to do then is take all of the nether stars from the mob crusher and send them back around to a nether star drawer in our storage drawer system. Now, before we get started with any of that, the first thing that I want to do in today's stream is I want to upgrade our resource simulator and I want to make a few more of the chipsets from the digital storage mod. Specifically, the very first one that I think we're going to want to make is, of course, the gold chipset gold is really the resource that we've been struggling with over the last uh, few episodes here and given that we do currently have over eight blocks of gold we can make the golden chipset and once we make the golden chipset we will then have infinite gold and especially if we can make a couple of speed and quantity upgrades that's going to allow us to get a staggering amount of gold incredibly quickly and we should get a snowball effect from there. Once we have netherite, once we have gold, we could look at getting redstone. Once we have all three of those, we can make as many of these null upgrade modules as we like. And then from there, we can make really just all of the rest of the chipsets, a bunch of speed modules, a bunch of upgrade modules. Once we get the nether stars automated, we can make as many resource simulators as we like. And at that point, we should essentially have an infinite amount of basically all of these resources right here. So... If we're going to make the gold chipset, we need a regular chipset. The only thing we're missing here is netherite. And as luck would have it, we are making netherite scrap. One and two. And boom, there is our chipset. And boom, there is our gold chipset. Just like with the netherite chipset, if we drop that in and maybe give it a little bit of help with the uh, time in a bottle here. That should start to produce gold fairly quickly. Now, of course, it's not super fast, but that is where the speed and quantity upgrades come in. So the speed upgrades are pretty easy. They're made with sugar, which we have a lot of thanks to our mob farm and that we can get a lot more of uh, thanks to the uh, snad and sugarcane interaction. The only other thing we need is the upgrade module, which again is netherite gold and redstone dust. So if we go ahead and grab some of this gold and make ourselves some more netherite ingots, we can then make a few of these bases and again, we're out of gold. That is fine. We can get more gold. We can then use that to make the upgrade base. And then once we have some of those, we can start making speed upgrades. And the speed upgrades are just going to increase the speed at which this produces gold. I believe you can put up to 32 speed upgrade modules into the resource simulator. As for the quantity upgrades, I believe you can only put eight of these in. And essentially, the amount that you get is two times the number of quantity upgrades. So if you have one quantity upgrade, you're going to get two ingots per cycle as opposed to one ingot. If you have four quantity upgrades, you're going to get eight ingots per cycle. And the maximum number of ingots per cycle you can get is 16 if you have eight 
quantity upgrades. So if we wanted to make eight quantity upgrades, we would need uh, 32 end crystals, 32 phantom membrane, and then eight upgrade modules. The upgrade modules, again, super easy. I don't think either of these two are going to be too difficult. The end crystals require glass, which we can make in abundance, eyes of ender, which we can also make in abundance, and then gas tears, which I'm fairly certain we can make in abundance carbon and sulfur we have and then mercury we can get very easily from either ender pearls but also from uh, the uh, warp to warp block which i'm pretty sure we still do have a, a fair amount of we do so uh, getting a bunch of end crystals should be fine and then phantom membrane wise this requires yet more mercury yet more sulfur and then some chlorine and again we can get the chlorine via the use of uh, cactus right we can take our cactus, we can smelt it down into a cactus green, and then we can take that cactus green, break it down into nickel chloride, and that nickel chloride can then be dissolved to get us chlorine. And so I think we should realistically be able to make 32 phantom membrane and 32 end crystals surprisingly quickly. Okay, so not too long later, I've uh, broken down a bunch of cactus. Uh, we did a quick bit of cactus farming over by the uh, snad there. I've also broken down a bunch of sulfur. We actually have some uh, of this sulfur here from thermal expansion, which just breaks down into sulfur. And then uh, I've broken down a bunch of the warped watt block that we had to get us a bunch of mercury. And so now over in here, we should be able to make a bunch of the phantom membrane. Specifically, we should be able to make uh, exactly 32 phantom membrane here, which is going to get us the maximum number of quantity upgrades. And there we go, there are 32 phantom membranes. So now let's see if we can't get uh, 32 end crystals. All right, so once again, a little while later, and we've managed to make a bunch of sand and smelt it into glass. I've also made 32 blaze powder, which we can combine with our ender pearls to get us 32 eyes of ender. And I was on my way to making 32 gas tiers, although as it turns out, we have made eight. Um, we do have a bunch of these glands over here, the catalyzing glands, in our mob drop chest right now they don't have a storage drawer which is why they're backing up in here with everything else but uh, if we take these and we craft them like so we can actually just craft the required guest tiers, which is extremely useful there we go i'll put the other one back in like that just because we don't really have much space over uh, in our draw system either but so uh, once we have everything we should be able to craft up 32 of these end crystals fantastic and then from there as long as we have enough gold netherite and redstone we should be able to craft um eight of these quantity upgrades so for that we need more gold right now we don't have a ton of gold uh, even though we do have the um the resource simulator here but again there is a snowballing effect that's going to happen here where we can make let's say eight of these netherite ingots and then from there we can make a couple of the blank modules with that we can make our first two of these uh, quantity modules and then, of course, we can add those to this with the speed modules. And then if we speed this up with our time in a bottle that does have uh, 15 hours left in it, that's going to start making things even faster than it was previously. We can then, of course, take that gold, use it to make even more netherite, use it to make even more modules, and use that to increase the amount that we get even further. All right, and that should be the eighth quantity upgrade. It is indeed. So now every single cycle here, we get 16 netherite scrap. We did have to swap back to netherite because we actually ran out of netherite, but the same is also true of gold here as well. Now, what we can do, of course, is we can make more speed upgrades, and we will try and make more speed upgrades uh, in a second here. But um, I think what we're going to want to do is let me grab this storage drawer eventually we want to have some kind of system that's going to allow us to uh, easily move all of the stuff generated from here around and into our storage drawer system for the time being we don't have that and so what i am going to do temporarily is uh, i'm going to grab a new axe we have the hatchet here but the hatchet doesn't really work as an axe in, in most scenarios but uh, if we grab just a regular diamond axe what we should be able to do is uh, quickly steal this drawer and if we're going to make this very fast, which is in ideally what I would like to do, we're going to need to get a pipe that can move items very fast. Now, by default, the item pipe from pipes, if we set it to extract here, can only extract four items every 20 ticks, as you can see in the top left there. However, if we go to at pipes, there are these uh, improved pipe upgrades, advanced pipe upgrades, ultimate pipe upgrades, and basic pipe upgrades that we can use to increase the speed at which items are transferred. So the first one, super easy, iron and redstone. The second one does require the first one with some redstone and some gold. Gold, thankfully, we can get from in here if we give this a quick time in a bottle. 
There we go, 16 gold, fantastic. Let's upgrade to tier two. Then we can go ahead and upgrade to tier three with four blocks of redstone, which is expensive, but one of the next uh, simulation cards we're gonna get is hopefully gonna be redstone. So this really shouldn't matter too, too much. There we go. And then of course, if we can make the uh, four netherite required here, along with four more blocks of redstone, we uh, should be able to upgrade to the highest tier possible, which I'm thinking should be overkill for this. I don't think we're going to need the uh, the highest tier of card, but I guess we will find out momentarily. Let's make another two of you. Then let's make the upgrade. Let's apply that to the pipe by, you can either shift right click or you can right click and place it in the slot here. Now this can transfer 64 items every one ticks, which means that's 64 items 20 times per second because there are 20 ticks per second. So essentially this can move 1,280 uh, gold per second over into this draw, which is insane. But let's see if we can't make another 30 speed upgrades to get a maximum 32 speed upgrades into this resource simulator. And then we'll see just how fast with the time in the bottle we can make gold because I think it's going to be staggeringly quick. All right. And we have maxed out the speed of the resource simulator. So without any time in the bottle shenanigans, this is as fast as it will go. Um, I think, yeah, there's a bit of maybe a visual glitch here, like it shows the gold here, and the number will go up to 32 and then up to 64, and it'll just kind of stay there. But as you can see, it is still making gold. And if I leave and come back in, the, the ingot is gone. So I'm pretty sure the gold is being transferred over uh, basically instantaneously into the storage drawer as it's made. You can see we're at 512, 528, 544. It goes up by 16 uh, every time. And it's actually pretty quick, given that this requires zero power uh, and zero fuel. But we can obviously take this further if we grab our time in a bottle. And if we right click this all the way up to 256x, we are going to start producing a staggering amount of gold. We're at 400, 500, 600, 700 blocks, 800 blocks, 900 blocks, 1,000 blocks, 1,100. We can, we can probably fill up this compacting drawer in a, a staggeringly short period of time here we're almost at uh, 2000 blocks i think 2048 blocks oh that's not the minimum i don't know how much um a, a, a compacting draw here can hold but it's it's a lot compacting draw so it landed on 3630 this can hold uh, apparently 8192 blocks of gold so we're almost halfway full on the compacting draw here we're at 32,000 gold and i think that's probably going to be enough to last us uh, quite a while here we can go and just throw that back into uh into the wall and we have now a ton of gold and now going forward of course we can do the same thing with uh netherite uh, if we go ahead and grab the uh, the draw that has netherite scrap in it not a compacting draw this one but it should work the same nonetheless we can then go ahead and put this guy down right about here we can swap out the gold card for the netherite card at which point if we want again we can speed this up we probably don't have to go quite all the way up to uh to 256 look at that we're already full up on uh on netherite scrap that's just getting deleted all the excess there that's not gonna change anything at all so that's fine and uh and obviously now going forward we can make really any other chipset right because now let's say we want to go and get uh, an unlimited amount of redstone the redstone chipset is easy enough to make we are going to have to get another one of these sugar shells here and that does remind me i was saying that redstone should potentially be the next chipset that we get however we do have almost a thousand redstone and we have a consistent supply of redstone coming in and so i think instead what we should probably do is get the chorus fruit chipset next. Between streams, I did go ahead and put down a bonsai pot here and place an end stone and chorus fruit into it. And so we have been very, very slowly but surely gathering chorus fruit, but this has been down for a few hours now, and we've got five chorus fruit, which is not particularly great. And if we want a constant supply of the lutetium required in order to make the shulker shells, I think it's going to be worthwhile us investing in the chorus fruit chipset to make it we just need eight chorus fruit and we need to smell that chorus fruit into pop chorus fruit we can then craft that chorus fruit into the uh, purple blocks and once we have eight purple blocks then we have the ability to make you know thirty two thousand chorus fruit in the space of a minute maybe boom boom and uh, we do need to get still another um another shulker shell here uh, thankfully we do have some lutetium lying around and we also have some uh, calcium carbonate as well we do indeed fantastic so uh, if we wanted to get another shulker shell it should just be a case of uh searching for it in the combiner here and then dropping in the calcium carbonate and the lutetium once we have one we can make ourselves the chipset once we have the chipset we can make the chorus root chipset and now we have an infinite amount of chorus root and by extension that infinite amount of chorus root turns into an infinite amount of lutetium if we drop it in over here 
as well as some uh, cellulose as well, if we want that. Uh, the cellulose can be used to make more sugar as well, if we want to make more speed upgrades. And of course, that lutetium can be combined up with the calcium carbonate to get even more of these shulker shells. And those shulker shells can be taken and crafted into even more of these chipsets. Again, at some point, we are going to run into the bottleneck that is the number of dragon's breath that we have, but we can always head back through into the, uh, the end and get even more dragon's breath if we wanted to. If we're only running low on netherite, we could just go ahead and craft a stack of those. We've got infinite netherite and infinite gold, so we'll take a few of these. Let's go ahead and get iron, potentially. Uh, we should have what it takes to get to eight blocks of iron, and as soon as we have eight blocks of iron, we can craft up the iron chipset. We can drop that in as well, like so, and if we do the exact same thing that we did with our golden draw, and just kind of go ahead and move this guy uh, with our X. round and over to here we can give that a quick accelerate using our 13 hours in the time in a bottle and at that point we should start getting a staggering amount of iron very quickly again we're going to end up with a few thousand blocks and so yeah we have here a very efficient resource generation system and what we should be able to do of course is uh, get ourselves multiple of these and i don't know if we're going to need it necessarily but given how fast you can get things here i i'm gonna have to take a look at, at the uh, end of life quest line more in depth and kind of get an idea for how much of everything we're going to need but we just got four thousand blocks of iron in less than a minute so we can fill up all of our ingot drawers or at least all of the uh these resource drawers very very quickly right um it's gonna take like 20 minutes max to get all of these full so we might not even have to worry really about getting too many more of these either way now this is done um, there are a few little things around the base that i do want to address before we get back to fixing the uh, the wither situation so uh, real quick we are running out of space here now i do very soon very very soon want to get started on a, uh, a better digital storage system um, i think we're probably going to go with applied energistics too just because the last few packs that we've played here on the channel have all been refined storage and i like to mix things up every once in a while but right now um the drawers are fine obviously because they all have void upgrades on them but the uh, the drawers here are a little full so i think what we might go ahead and do real quick as a, a very temporary solution is uh, quickly craft a few of these uh, gold to iron chest upgrades and uh, if we just upgrade both of these chests from gold to diamond that should give us a fair little bit of, uh, of extra breathing room to go ahead and dump most of this stuff round into the system while we work on upgrading and uh, finishing our nether star automation so in order to fully automate the production of nether stars as i mentioned before we're going to need to move our uh, and set up soul sand production so let's grab our encased fan let's grab our soul sand and i would like this to be over here although to be fair we probably can leave this. I know I've just picked it up, but we probably can leave this here. Uh, rotate this back a little bit. And I think what I might do um, is use industrial foregoing as a way of producing the sand. There are multiple ways we could do this. In the last stream, I mentioned using uh, alchemistry, which we could do. You could take the cobblestone, break it down into silicon dioxide, and then use the silicon dioxide in the compactor to make sand. That is easily automatable and easily done. Um, somebody in the YouTube comments recommended using the crushing wheels from Create, which also would work. The big crushing wheels, you could take the cobblestone from the cobblestone generators, crush that down into sand, and then use that sand in front of the encased fan. That would also work. But the uh, the one that I think I'm going to end up going with here is the material stoneworks factory from Industrial Foregoing. Uh, this one is by far the smallest and most compact way of generating sand. It is one block and is fairly easy to make. We are missing most of the items required here, but we can make a diamond pickaxe, that is fine. We can make a regular furnace, also not a problem. We can make two golden gears. Between streams, I did go ahead and almost make the dissolution chamber. I'm not quite sure why that didn't uh, actually craft, but it's on its way there. It should be done any second now. And then after that, the only things we are missing are one pink slime and two plastic. Plastic-wise, we do have 400 and 20 tiny dry rubber in our dry rubber drawer now so uh, let's go ahead and craft up some dry rubber and quickly smelt that into regular old plastic once we have at least two plastic we can come on back over this should be done it is indeed and then uh, if we unlock the recipe here in order to make pink slime all we need is one glass pane and 300 millibuckets of the pink slime in the dissolution chamber so we'll go boom and 
We'll give that just a second. That will give it a slight helping hand. And boom. Once we have that, that is everything for the material stoneworks factory. And this is a super cool and super versatile block that can be used to automatically generate quite a few resources. So we'll put ours down. I think right about here. The reason for that will become apparent in a second. But essentially, what we can do in here is we can take a bucket of lava and a bucket of water. A bucket of water we can get from our sink, of course. The lava we can hopefully get from around here. Yes, I did just top that up right before the start of today's stream. But uh, if we grab a bucket of water, we can put both the bucket of lava and the bucket of water into the dissolution chamber. And that's going to begin to, to generate for us cobblestone. Uh, you can change what is generated. You can see it can generate uh, cobblestone, netherrack, granite, obsidian, andesite, diorite, and we're back to cobblestone. And depending on what you want to generate, that's going to change the requirements for the stoneworks factory. Thankfully, we just need to generate cobblestone. And as you can see on the left, generating cobblestone requires a thousand millibuckets of water with a thousand millibuckets of lava, but it doesn't actually use any of the lava or the water. So all we have to do is put water and lava in, and it's going to start making cobblestone just as soon as we hook it up to power, which we can do fairly easily, thanks to the fact that our uh, flux point is fairly close by. And uh, I promise I will make this look a little nicer in the future, but for now, this should indeed be making cobblestone. It is. And the cool thing about the Material Stoneworks Factory is not just that it's a cobblestone generator, but it also has these four uh, modifying actions. So essentially, the way this works is every time a cycle here finishes, the action here will be applied to the uh, the item in the inventory before it. So this action will apply to the green slot, this action to the blue, this one to the yellow, this one to the red, and the, uh, the dark green is the final slot here. So um, you can set all of these to do nothing with the, uh, the red circle, uh, but you can also do other stuff. For example, we can smelt, you can crush, which is what we're going to do. We're going to crush uh, the cobblestone here, if we cycle for the right one, into gravel, and then we're going to crush the gravel into sand. There we go. The sand should stop there because we've got nothing happening with this action. Uh, you could also craft into a two-by-two two fashion, so we could craft, uh, you know, cobblestone crafting tables, or uh, depending on what you have in here, you could craft other things into um, that two-by-two two form. You can also do a three-by-three three craft if you want to craft compressed versions of the cobblestone or the netherrack or anything like that, and uh, you could also do nothing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that sand, and we're going to drop it down in front of the uh, the soul sand and the soul fire, like this. From there, what I think we're probably going to want to do is get another create belt, like so, with a little bit more create shaft. And from there, what we should be able to do is set up another belt that goes just a few blocks over. I think we want to go... I don't know if this last block is actually getting any fire, so just to be safe, I'm going to go here to here. Very short belt, but if we do something like this, we can then get a funnel, which I don't think we have in the system. We don't. We can make another andesite funnel here from create, and if we put that on the Stoneworks Factory, that's going to begin pulling things out. However, I think we need to go to the green slot, which is the first one, and make sure the front here is set to disabled. Otherwise, I think it will try and pull cobblestone out. We can do the same with the blue slot, set that to disabled. Otherwise, it'll try and pull some of the gravel out. If we leave it on send, this one is still enabled. Uh, we can set that to push, although I don't think it really matters too, too much. We can then put down the andesite casing, make sure that it is set to uh, out by just right-clicking with the wrench. There we go. And then that should, in theory, begin to extract some of the sand here. We might need to get this moving in order to actually see it work. If I grab the crank real quick, let me just test that. Let's do one of these yeah you see that totally works so as soon as the belt starts moving this starts going and the final piece of the puzzle is just going to be getting a regular old storage drawer we'll put this down here we'll place a funnel on here and all we then need to do is make sure that this drawer is locked to soul sand that way what should happen if we do some manual cranking is the sand won't actually go anywhere so even though the belt is still spinning the sand is going to wait on there until it gets transformed into soul sand, at which point it's then going to be allowed into the drawer. And so all we need to do now is run the shaft power from this gearbox over here around and into either one of these shafts, at which point we will have fully automated the production of soul sand. And as per usual, I think for now at least, the easiest way for us to get the soul sand from here over 
to the uh, Wither Builder is going to be via the use of Ender Chests, simply due to the fact that we can, of course, go ahead and just purchase Ender Chests from the eShop with our infinite amounts of cryptocurrency. And I did accidentally buy six there, but that is fine. We still have almost a thousand cryptocurrency. Uh, we'll end up putting this down right about here and we'll put another one down by the Wither Spawner. Uh, we are going to have to give this its own unique frequency. Let's quickly grab some blue dye here. We'll go blue, blue, blue. I don't remember if we set a frequency for this ender chest. Oh, we did. This one's also blue, blue, blue. Okay, never mind. Let me change this one. We'll do, if we grab some uh, bone meal and get some uh, white dye, we will do blue, white, blue. That can be our uh, our soul sand frequency. And then uh, once again, we can just do some uh, item pipes and then extract from here round into there. And uh, then we can go do the same thing at the other end. Speaking of which, uh, quick detour. People did mention in the YouTube comments that I should make another elevator and we should put that elevator directly above our current elevator system. That's going to allow me to uh, much more easily fly up as opposed to going um, kind of flying down and around through that door every single time I want to get up here. So I'm going to put this down and then I'm going to temporarily at least set this to uh, south. So now whenever we uh, fly up, it's going to point me directly at the uh, the wither system over here. From there, how do I want to do this is a good question. I think what we'll do is we'll just have one ender chest here. That one is going to be set to blue, white, blue. I have put it upside down, but these do actually work upside down. That's perfect. We can then set that to extract over into the wither builder. Perfect. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side here. We'll get another ender chest. We'll put that right about there. Um, eventually, this one will have the wither skeleton skulls in it. This one we can set to, let's say, uh, blue, white, white. So we'll do like one blue uh, right at the top, which in this case is at the bottom because the ender chest is currently upside down. But when we put it down later, it's probably going to be the right way around. So the blue goes at the top and then this goes here. We set this to extract. We do a quick slash uh, skyblock home to get us back to our base, at which point uh, another thing people mentioned in the YouTube comments was the tempad. The tempad is craftable, I believe. I don't think we can purchase it. We can't, but the tempad is a super cool item from the Tempad mod, and uh, it's fairly easy to make as well. We need six blocks of quartz, one, two, three, four, five, and six, along with uh, one tinted glass, which does require some amethyst, which we can make with silicon dioxide and iron, and then it also requires a redstone lamp, which should be very doable. I'm fairly certain that we have glowstone lying around. We totally do, and boom. So let's quickly get uh, four iron and four silicon dioxide so iron we've got a ton of one two three four and then silicon dioxide we also have a bunch of if we put both of those over in here silicon dioxide and iron four amethyst shards gets us one tinted glass and that gets us the tempad so the tempad is really nifty in that uh if we right click it right about here we can go to options we can pick our color uh, let's go with yellow that's the same color as our power network and then we can go run program new location home add location and now no matter where we are in the universe if we open up our tempad click run program and select home we can then click teleport and that's going to open a portal that allows us to instantly teleport back to where we set the home portal really nifty stuff we can of course do the exact same thing over in the end so before we were using the um the uh, matter transmitters over here no longer is that necessary instead we can right click run program new location the end add location again now we can just run program and home and uh, there is a cool down on here i'm not quite sure how long it is it looks like it might be one minute but um this is not necessarily meant to replace the slash home command but it is going to make it easier for us to get to places like the end here and of course we can do the exact same with the nether as well because um although we do have another portal right here it is going to be faster for us to just part the tempad and uh, no matter where we are in the world, walk straight through into the nether.
And of course, this does have the uh, the added benefit of also allowing us to set multiple locations within the nether. So uh, in the last episode, we went all the way back to server spawn to build a new nether portal to go through that nether portal to get to uh, the local nether fortress. Whereas with the tempad, we could just set a new location waypoint at the nether fortress and then in the future just click run program and go to that nether fortress and, uh, and we would be good to go. This is ready to go again, so run program, home, and teleport. And boom, we're back in the overworld. Nice, really nifty item. Very happy to have that uh, ready to go. Now, real quick, let's see if we can't make a few gearboxes and get the uh, shaft power around to this belt. All right, and there we go. I've just put down three more gearboxes, one underneath here, one here, and one here, and that shaft power is now going down, along, and into the belt. And one thing you can do with the shaft here is you can right-click the andesite casing on the shaft. It won't use the andesite casing, but it will cover it up. Uh, you can also do the same with the brass casing as well, much like we did with the mechanical belts before. You can right-click that on the shaft also, and it'll just look like this instead of like this. But uh, that is taken care of. So now, the final piece of the puzzle, chat, is going to be getting the Wither Skeleton Skulls up to the Wither Spawner, which really shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, we can intercept our Wither Skeleton Skulls here. We already have them ready to go. So if we put the Ender Chest here, and I'm going to rotate that. I'm actually going to put it down like this, just so that then I know to put the blue die at the top of the ender chest, like that. At which point, we then do need another item card, of which we have a few left in the system. We're going to set at this side here, being south, to insert, but we do want to filter the insert to only be with the skeleton skulls. Again, I guess if we wanted to here, one thing that might be a little easier is getting a, um, a storage door to act as an intermediary. It's not strictly necessary, but just on the off chance, we are generating Wither Skeleton Skulls faster than we are, um, the, the, faster than we're using them. It, uh, it is going to be helpful, and it is going to stop us from uh, clogging up the mob chest, which I know sounds ridiculous at the moment because the mob chest is clogged up with all kinds of garbage, but um, hopefully some point in the very near future it will no longer be clogged up with garbage and it'd be nice if, uh, if we weren't clogging up on Wither Skeleton Skulls either. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and take one of these, put these into here. Again, this does also take care of the filtering for us. Um, it means we don't have to filter. We can instead just go ahead and put the uh, item card, set, to, uh, set it to insert, and all of the skulls are going to automatically make their way over. And then at that point, we can uh, go ahead and plop down the ender chest, set this here to extract, and that should work. Now, I have left the roof open there. That should be fine, he said, despite being not at all convinced that it will be fine, simply due to the fact... Oh, <laughs> that's not a permanent solution, but uh, that's just because uh, the, the crusher is quite fast. Let me get the uh, remaining tinted glass, and let's quickly fix this. There we go. But uh, yeah, we should be good to go here, actually. This should be working and should be fully automated. You can see it's placing down the withers automatically. As soon as this one blows up, the next one will be uh, placed down and it'll start doing its thing. This one will die almost instantly. The next one's ready to go. And then the next batch is put down. And look at that, we have automated fully the production of nether stars. One last thing that we could do here just to make it a tiny bit more efficient is we could make a couple of the add-ons that make the crusher faster because right now it's taking the crusher uh, a couple of seconds to actually kill the wither so there is the speed add-on tier one and tier two tier two is faster the efficiency tier one and tier two tier two is better and the processing tier one and tier two again tier three is better these are all made in a fairly similar fashion they're all made in the dissolution chamber with latex redstone dust glass panes diamond gears and then the only difference are the last two items the processing upgrade requires a furnace and a crafting table. The efficiency requires two blaze rods and the speed requires two sugar. None of that should be too difficult for us to do. Do we have what it takes to make six, one, two, three? Uh, we have iron nuggets. There's no way that's the case. Oh, it is the case because I moved the iron drawer. It's over here. Let's go ahead and put that back where it belongs. This is uh, on its way to filling up. But again, this is probably way more iron than we're going to need. Maybe for the entirety of the pack, but at least for the uh, foreseeable future. Three, four, five, and six. So uh, we can put those in here. We then need the glass panes. I think we have glass left over from earlier. We do. Redstone, we have. 
uh, sugar we have. We only need two sugar. We need two blaze rods, which we don't have, but I assume that we can make in much the same way we made the blaze powder, although it would appear that's not the case. Interesting. Okay, we'll come back to that one. We don't necessarily need all three of these upgrades. Um, I think two of them is almost certainly going to be enough to, uh, to make the crusher fast enough, and I keep forgetting that the furnace recipe has been tweaked to require a compressed cobblestone. That is not a problem. And then we just need one regular old Minecraft crafting table. So we'll start with the glass panes, the redstone, the crafting table, and the furnace. Give that a slight nudge with the time in a bottle. We'll then do the same with sugar. The problem with the dissolution chamber, and I think all industrial foregoing machines, is that if you don't have enough power to finish the craft, the craft will restart. So the uh, the machine does require a constant supply of power to work, uh, which is why it can sometimes be a little dangerous using the time in a bottle. As you can see here, I've gone a bit too far. Um, the machine handily can do the craft, but trying to do it at 8x speed, because there's only so much power the dissolution chamber can hold, and because right now we can't pull out of the flux point at anything faster than 256 redstone flux per tick, uh, it creates this bottleneck where if you try and use the time of the bottle and go too fast, the dissolution chamber will stop working. Either way, if we go ahead and take both of these add-ons and drop them into here, like so, this should now be significantly faster than it was previously. And now the only thing slowing us down in terms of nether star production is the speed of our wither skeleton spawner. So as we saw last episode, there are a few things we can do to increase the amount of Wither Skeleton Skulls we're going to get. The first thing, actually, doesn't even relate to the spawner. It relates to the Mob Masher, right? We can make the beheading upgrades. And now that we have a ton more gold and a ton more iron than we did last episode, we should be able to make a lot of these fairly easily. Also, fun fact, you can use these broken gold helmets from the diamond chest in the making of the beheading upgrades. They don't have to be uh, fully repaired, brand new uh, helmets in order to actually work here. So uh, if we wanna make a full batch of 10, we're going to need uh, 20 iron helmets. And then we've got four golden helmets, so we need uh, 16 more golden helmets. Once we have all of those, we can then go ahead and start crafting these. There are our first eight. Let's do this and this. That's going to get us number nine. This and this gets us number 10. And then we'll temporarily break a little bit of the glass here. And there are a few drops there. Let's try and stand back so we don't pick those up. But now we should get substantially more Wither Skeleton Skulls every time uh, a Wither is killed. And so now we can start to look at spawning those Withers even faster. And I think the first thing we want to do is apply as much sugar as possible to the spawner. I don't know what the max is, but you can see in the top left there, we're decreasing the minimum spawn delay all the way down to 20. That might be ticks, that might be seconds, I'm actually not too sure, I think it's ticks. So uh, 20 ticks will be one second. We can then look at uh, decreasing the maximum spawn delay, which I believe was done with clocks. Let me quickly check though. It is, and again, clocks, very easy now that we have basically infinite gold. So let's just do something like this and this, and we'll make a stack of clocks and we'll start applying those until we can bring this all the way down as low as it will go. It looks like you can put more than a stack of clocks on, which is wild, but we'll go ahead and make another stack of clocks. We've got the redstone for it, we've got the gold for it. And there we go, we brought it all the way down to 20 uh, units of measure as well. So now uh, the minimum and maximum spawn delay should be the exact same. If we wanted to increase the spawn count, that would require gas tears, I think. Oh no, that would require the fermented spider eyes, which again, we should be able to do. We've got mushrooms coming in from the mob farm. We've got sugar, we've got spider eyes. So fermented spider eyes. Let's go ahead and make a few of these. I don't know, again, how high we can go with this. It's at four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Can we take it up further? Maybe 16? 16 works, can we do 17? No, 16 is the max. Okay, that makes sense. Spawn range at four is perfectly fine. Um, if anything, we might wanna bring that down just a little bit because right now that might mean that some of the mobs are trying to spawn in the glass and can't. I'm not quite sure if that's how that works, but it's possible. And then what do the gas tiers do? The gas tiers increase the number of entities that can be nearby, which could be interesting. 
And again, given that we have a bunch of the other uh, glands available to us over here, I feel like there's no reason not to go ahead and uh, apply some gas tears and see if that has a, a, an increased effect. I think we can take that all the way up to 32, which we've done. Fantastic. All right, let's replace the uh, the dirt there to make it dark again. You can instantly hear a bunch of wither skeletons getting spawned. My goodness, look at that. They're spawning so much quicker. They're spawning in such larger numbers. And we are almost certainly getting a ton of, uh, of wither skeleton skulls from this. How many do we have? Um, we've got an unknown number, maybe zero actually. It's all going through likely into that uh, drawer. Um, we probably are getting a ton, but they're not going anywhere because this here is completely full. Um, right now, we only have one item card sending items down into the trash can, which is a problem because it means I can't add more to the filter. This filter here is full. So I'm thinking, let's grab another item card. Let's grab another filter. And I think this does work. I think you can have another item card going down like this, but I think in order for it to work, we might need to overclock the uh, the node. But let's give it a try. If I took a sword and I put that in here, does that start taking swords? It doesn't. I think this is where, and I'm going to temporarily go here and type in, just mute that skeleton hurt sound because it's real loud. <laughs> But uh, I think this is where we need a node overclocker. This one right here works in the same way as the, or a similar way to the card overclocker, but this overclocks the actual node itself, I believe, to allow it to use more than one card. So this is kind of working. Um, this is full. If I put the stone swords here, they do get extracted, so they definitely are being sent to the trash can. It's just not going fast enough. So I could add more speed upgrades more card overclockers to this i can give it a try i don't know if that's gonna help because it seems like the problem isn't this like um the speed at which is taking the items out it seems the problem is the speed at which the items are coming in and the fact that it can only take like one stack at a time but we can give it a go here let's add two more overclockers to this let's increase the amount to 64 and decrease the time to one tick there we go now that's perfect okay so now it's doing the exact same thing as our super fast netherite upgrade over here in that it's taking uh, 64 items per tick. So, you know, like 1,000 plus items per second are being moved out of there. Uh, so this is working and we can now go ahead and add uh, even more to this uh, downward, this new downward filter to hopefully start to clear out even more of this, uh, of this backlog here. And whether or not the absorption hopper can keep up, that's the next question. It's, um, it's quite possible that given just the amount of mob drops that are coming in here, especially the amount of, uh, of wither skeleton related mob drops. You can see we've got a ton of um, withered bones, withered ribs and coal coming in at, at just a staggering speed. We might even have to um, take something like the, uh, the item pipe here and use that to extract from the absorption hopper round and into the diamond chest. If we do something like this, set this to extract, and then add that upgrade to it. That's going to move those instantly. And then this is now fast enough to make that work as well, which is, is fantastic. Um, the only question then is um, where in the world are all of my Wither Skeleton Skulls at? All right. It took a second to clear the backlog of items, but it is working. And we have got oh, almost a thousand Wither Skeleton Skulls, not including the ones that are in over here as well. Um, of course, we could put a, a pipe upgrade to make this faster, but I don't really think it's uh, it's going to be necessary. Uh, we can see now, though, that the Withers are coming in very quickly over here, and they should get killed, yeah, almost instantly by the Crusher because the Crusher is going so much faster now than it was before. So I'm hopeful that almost as soon as the Wither is spawned, it should basically be instantly killed. It is, nice. And then the next one is ready to go, and we've done it. We have an infinite nether star making system. All we need to do now is uh, grab one more framed drawer. We'll throw that down right about here. And as always, we can get an item pipe and set that to extract. And now we have the ability to hold, you know, 2,048 nether stars, uh, which are slowly but surely gonna back up over time. Uh, because we're getting infinite with the skeleton skulls, we should definitely 100%. Uh, I need to get used to using that elevator, by the way. But uh, we should 100% put a void upgrade into the Wither Skeleton Skull Spawner because um, otherwise we're going to fill 
this up with uh, with the Scarlet Skulls, which is going to be less than ideal. Let's go check real quick how we're doing on Soul Sand, because in a weird turn of events, the Soul Sand could become our limiting factor because the soul sand is coming in significantly slower than the wither skeleton skulls are uh, so the real question is just whether or not we're making four soul sand in the time it takes for a wither to spawn and die i don't think we are so i think this is going to be what bottlenecks is we could look at making this faster there are definitely ways to make this faster um of course right now actually there are fairly easy ways to make this faster we could just make another one of the, uh, the speed and our efficiency upgrades that we made previously, if we grab a, uh, a diamond gear or two. Never mind, we're completely out of diamonds, but we do have two diamond gears in the system. Okay, this is fine. Let's get two sugar uh, and two more glass pins. And then if we do this, 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 and this, that should get us a speed upgrade, which we can add to the Stoneworks factory. That is gonna make that uh, marginally faster uh, not that it really matters too much. We are already getting Nether Stars uh, coming in likely faster than we're going to uh, need them. But if we add that in, that is going to make that just a little bit quicker. And that's going to mean that more sand is on the belt more of the time. And therefore, we should get uh, Soul Sand coming in just that little bit faster. And so now we can uh, we can kind of put that to rest. Let me... I want to turn that um, explosion sound down. I think it's just Minecraft generic explode because that wither is rather loud. And I think we might have overtuned the wither skeleton spawner just a little bit. It's spawning so many wither skeletons. We probably didn't need to add the spider eyes. I think just decreasing the minimum maximum spawn time might have done the trick. I think some of the other upgrades might have just been overkill. But either way, that's now working. We're getting nether stars. And um, at some point soon, we'll look at uh, importing those nether stars so that they're accessible by our system. But Speaking of the system, that's what I want to work on next. I want to look at setting up a very basic applied energistics to system that we can then expand going forward and use to set up auto crafting, which is really the main thing we're going to need applied energistics to for because simple storage networks works perfectly fine for wirelessly accessing all of your stuff in one convenient crafting remote. But Applied Energistics 2 has much more advanced and sophisticated ways of auto crafting and moving items around that we're definitely going to need if we're going to want to craft a lot of these late game items, which are not only very big, they also require a lot of sub items, which also require sub items, which require certain items going to certain places and being uh, automated and crafted in certain ways. So if we're going to make this happen, I think uh, AE2 is definitely going to be the way to go. Refined storage would work completely fine as well and is in fact almost certainly easier than Applied Energistics 2, but just to mix things up, I'm going to go with AE2 because we've done refined storage uh, to death over the last year. So uh, to get started with AE2, we can take this quest line here. And in fact, real quick, we can claim um, a few extra bits of cryptocurrency just to make sure that those rewards are claimed. Now, to get started with Applied Energistics 2, we are going to need an inscriber because almost every item from Applied Energistics 2 requires some form of processor, and these processors are made in the inscriber. Now, we do have the Lazier A2 mod installed, which is going to allow us to make these in a much easier way, but you have to kind of get into A2 before you can make the uh, the circuit etcher and, and get into Lazier A2. So you have to start the old fashioned way and then pivot into the easier way uh, later on down the line. Thankfully, the inscriber is super easy to make. The inscriber is just uh, some iron, some copper, and two sticky pistons, all of which we should have or be able to make two pistons into two sticky pistons into one inscriber. Nice. Now, uh, that's also a quest. Fantastic. The first few things we're going to need are an Emmy drive cage. This right here. We're going to need uh, an Emmy crafting terminal. This guy right here. We're going to need some ME cable. That is this one. The Fluix ME glass cable is the basic cable. You can color it different colors if you'd like. And then we are going to need at the very least a 1K storage disk. That is uh, this one right here. And then if we want to be able to access everything in our storage drawers, we're also going to need a storage bus, which is basically Applied Energistics 2's version of the link cable from Simple Storage Networks. So... Most of this stuff, as I mentioned, is going to require one of three processors. There's the calculation processor, 
there is the logic processor, and then there is the engineering processor. Let me see if I can find that one real quick. It is this one here. The logic processor is made in the inscriber with a printed logic circuit, redstone, and printed silicon. Uh, they're all the same, by the way. So they're all redstone, printed silicon, and then it's just the uh, circuit that's different. So the engineering processor requires the engineering circuit. The calculation processor requires the uh, calculation circuit. And then all the circuits are also made in the same way. They're made in the inscriber. The calculation processor is made with Certus Quartz crystals. The logic is made with gold ingots. And the engineering is made with diamonds. We do have, thankfully, a few Certus Quartz crystals from our quarry, which is a little redundant now because I don't think we're going to need it going forward thanks to our um, digital resource producer behind us. Now, the only tricky part about this is that each one of the circuits requires a different press. Again, here, Lazier AE2 does add a universal press that I assume can do all of them, but in order to get that, you have to go a little further into AE2 getting flux steel ingots and getting a singularity. And so for us to start with, we need to get an inscriber calculation press, we need to get an inscriber logic press, and we need to get an inscriber engineering press, as well as an inscriber silicon press, because silicon also has to be made like this. Thankfully, silicon, super easy to make. You can either smelt nether quartz into silicon, or alternatively, you can smelt certus quartz into silicon as well. Or alternatively, alternatively, I believe we can also, if I'm not mistaken, use a material stoneworks factory to break cobblestone down into gravel, gravel into sand, sand into dust maybe, and then dust into silicon. So if we wanted to, we could also look at automating the production of silicon via the use of the material stoneworks factory, which we might want to do just because uh, going forward, it's possible that uh, we don't want to spend too much time smelting nether quartz. But in uh, the interest of getting a very basic A2 system up and running uh, in a short period of time, I am just going to go ahead and do something like that to hopefully get us uh, a decent amount of silicon to get us started here. So to get these presses, thankfully, they don't look too difficult. I believe all four of them can be made using a regular old Minecraft stone cutter. Let's go ahead and drop this guy down right about here for now. And then we just need four blocks of sky stone. And the sky stone we can make by right clicking lithium onto regular Minecraft stone. That is a custom recipe for this pack, but for us, it means one, two, three, four regular stone. And then we just need four uh, lithium. We don't have any lithium. How do we go about getting lithium is the next question. It looks like end stone has lithium in it. I don't think we have any end stone currently. We don't. However, we do have our temp pad here. So if we do uh, real quick, I'm going to go ahead and do a slash set home. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go slash home. I'm then going to use my temp pad to do run program, new location, spawn, add location, and then I'm going to go slash skyblock home, which is going to take me over here. And then I'm going to change the slash home location to be here. So I'm going to do slash set set home. So that now whenever I type slash home, I get teleported here as opposed to back to spawn because slash skyblock home is a bit of a, a pain to type every single time. But now what we can do is we can go uh, through to the end using our temp pad. Quickly grab ourselves a little bit of endstone. Then do a quick slash home. And it should just be that easy for us to grab a bunch of lithium. One, two, three, four. Let's go ahead and break all of that. At which point, can we then put that in here? We totally can. And we can get ourselves a calculation press, an engineering press, a logic press, and a silicon press. So all of those are usable in the inscriber. Now, I'm pretty sure that the inscriber can just be connected to a flux point. It can. It used to be the case that you'd have to go through an energy acceptor to kind of convert redstone flux into AE. You can see in the top left there that the machines from Applied Energistics take a different kind of power, but I think in newer versions of Minecraft that uh, FE is the same as RF, is the same as AE, is the same as IF. They're all the same uh, unit, just with different names. So thankfully, they're all intercompatible. And so now what we should be able to do is grab some of the silicon that we made earlier, drop that in with the silicon press, like so. Now, much like the dissolution chamber, the inscriber is a little annoying in that you can only put one item in at a time, which is not 
ideal. Um, one thing we can do here to make our lives a little easier is we can get ourselves just a regular chest. And if we make another one of those very fast pipe upgrades from pipes, I think we should be able to insert an extract very quickly because I'm thinking about using the time in a bottle to make this faster. But uh, the trouble then is just inserting and extracting fast enough. But again, I think if we can get maybe two of these, which should be very easy now that we have so much going on. Although again, diamonds, we don't have any diamonds. Okay, in that case then, let's just take these two. These are already gonna be a little faster than a hopper by themselves. So let's try this, this, and this. And then of course, we'll set you to extract, we'll set you to extract, we'll upgrade both of these to pull 16 items every 10 ticks, which is 32 items per second. So now if I put this in here, that should start crafting it. We can use our time in a bottle to make this faster. And so now hopefully, I actually don't know if that works. That doesn't look like it's much faster. Yeah, so unfortunately that doesn't work, which is a bit of a shame. You can make acceleration cards, as you can see here, for the inscriber, which will make it faster. The acceleration cards are not too difficult to make. They do require, again, the diamonds that we currently don't have, which is less than ideal. But uh, that does remind me, though, that we are going to need to get diamonds in order to proceed with AE2 because we need to make at least one engineering processor, and that does require a diamond. So what I might do here, real quick, is if we go through to the nether, we can uh, alter the quarry here to uh, to only search for diamonds, right? Let's grab the filter. And if we change it from filtering for netherite and instead add the tag for diamond ore, we can then put this back in. And if we check JEI, I believe diamond ore spawns right down at Y level negative 64. It does, it spawns most often right down at the bottom. So we can probably scan from maybe 54, maybe 50 down to 64 is what we could, uh, we could search for. So let's take the chip card. Let's offset this by, let's say 64 here because we don't want to scan the same area that we've already scanned. So this is just going to push it uh, another 32 blocks in the, uh, the X direction. And then instead of doing 133 levels, we want it to do maybe 14. And we want those 14 levels to be right down I think we want to do like negative 126 here. Yeah, that kind of seems perfect. It's going from about Y level negative 51 down to um, down to negative 64. And so that should hopefully, slowly but surely, gather us a few diamonds. We've already managed to get six. And uh, if we wanted to make the diamond chipset to allow us to make infinite diamonds, for that we, we are going to need eight blocks of diamonds, which is 72 diamonds in total which could be possible, honestly. This thing is, is pretty quick. If we give this a quick little um, acceleration. It's possible we might be able to get to, um, to 72 diamonds. Although this is now done. It actually scanned that area very quickly and we got 26. That's good though, because that means that what we can do now is we can just set this to uh, maybe like 128 by 128. We can set it to a much larger area offset this quite a bit. Let's do like 256. Let's push it quite far out. And then let's do that again. All right, that did not take long at all. We have 86 diamonds. So let's quickly go ahead and craft up uh, eight blocks of diamonds. And then from there, let's make the diamond chipset. We didn't need to do this necessarily right away, but there's no reason not to, I don't think. It saves us having to, uh, to save up for 72 in the future. And so uh, once again, let's just quickly go ahead and steal the diamond draw. We'll then drop that down over here, I guess, for now. We don't have our netherite pipe upgrade here. Our netherite pipe upgrade has been moved over to here, but I'm temporarily just going to steal that to allow us to uh, very quickly fill up on diamonds. This can only hold uh, 2048, although if we are quick, we can make a, uh, a diamond storage upgrade and add that to this to give us even more space and allow us to hold even more diamonds here. And there we go, 51,500 diamonds. I think that might be enough for us to get a basic AE2 system up and running. We'll put that back down and uh, let's see. So I was mentioning the acceleration cards. Uh, the acceleration cards are somewhat easy to make actually. They do require these Fluix crystals and the Fluix crystals 
are made by growing Fluix seeds. I believe that's our best way of doing it. Um, although actually we have an enrichment chamber, right? We do. Okay, so that's thankfully an easier way of doing it. So we can make these uh, Fluix seeds that uh, normally you have to put into water and wait 20 minutes. You can make that 20 minutes faster with crystal growth accelerators, but we don't have to worry about doing any of that. We can use the enrichment chamber uh, to make the seeds. You need sand and Fluix dust. And in the newer versions of AE2, Fluix dust is made by dropping redstone dust, charged Certus quartz and nether quartz into a pool of water. Uh, this happens instantly. You don't have to do any waiting for this one. The only thing we don't have here is charged Certus quartz and uh, charged Certus quartz we can get by using the Tesla coil from Create. Um, although I'm pretty sure there's, um, yeah, no, there is a charger from that. For whatever reason, it doesn't show that in JI. I think there is a page about it right here. Yeah, it says it in the charger. I don't know why it's on an information page. I would have assumed it just showed the charger. But either way, uh, let's grab a charger from A2. Even easier than the inscriber. Let's whack that down uh, for now. Maybe just right about here. Although I think the power does have to go into the top of the inscriber. So I think we are going to have to grab some energy pipes and do something like that. Chat is right in that I should move this pipe upgrade back over and into here although again now that we have diamonds we can make really as many of those ultimate pipe upgrades as we like and now that we have the charger we can take some certus quartz we can put that in and after i believe a random amount of time it will get transformed into a charged certus quartz you can see some of them happen instantly some of them take a little longer but none of them really take more than a couple of seconds so if we wanted to make three acceleration cards, we'd need three Fluix crystals, which uh, we should be able to do. We've got four charged Certus Quartz. Let's grab four Nether Quartz and four Redstone. Then we can head on down to our unlimited water source, which is around back here. And if we do charged Certus Quartz, Nether Quartz, and Redstone, they should transform into Fluix Dust. They do indeed. Fantastic. We can then craft that with some sand to get Fluix seeds, and we can take those Fluix seeds and drop them in our enrichment chamber to transform them into Fluix crystals. Again, if we give that a little bit of a nudge, that should make it just a little bit faster. And going forward, I believe we can just crush these. We can. So once you have your first Fluix crystals, you can then make a crusher from mechanism, crush the Fluix crystal down into Fluix dust, craft that with a sand to make two Fluix seeds, because you get two at a time here, and you can basically double your Fluix crystals at just the cost of sand and power. So once these are done, if we want those acceleration cards, we now just need some calculation processes, which are processes made with the uh, Certus Quartz crystals here. So let's swap silicon out for calculation and drop the Certus Quartz in over here. That's gonna slowly but surely start to make us some of these. We only need two of them, actually. So this can, can stop. Once we have two of them, I'm going to put some stuff in here just to free up my space for now. Uh, once we have two of them, we can take the silicon, the calculation circuits, and the redstone and put all three of those in here. That's going to make us our first calculation processor. We can then do that one more time to get us our second calculation processor. And once we have both of those, we should be able to make two lots of advanced cards, uh, so four advanced cards in total, and then craft those with the new Fluix crystals into acceleration cards. And if we fill this with three acceleration cards, it should now be a lot faster than it was. So now if we go ahead and put, let's say, a stack of diamonds in here with the engineering press, like so, it's now going to much more quickly produce these circuits. Now, I don't know if it's the inscriber that's a little slow here, like as it takes a few seconds for things to get extracted, um, or if it's the... Uh, the pipes upgrades but uh, we can test that by making better pipes upgrades now that we have the diamonds for it let's quickly make eight blocks of redstone and then let's make actually make, let's make 16 blocks of redstone because we need eight for upgrading both of these to diamond and then we need a further eight to upgrade them both to netherite and then let's see if we do this and this is that faster I think it's a little faster. I don't know if it's quite as fast as you'd hope, given how expensive those pipe upgrades are, but that is definitely quick, which is good. And uh, we'll do the same with gold here as well. Uh, we'll make a bunch of gold logic circuits. 
Once we have quite a few of uh, the circuits here, we can then go ahead and look at uh, transforming those into processors because we do need them all in processor form. Now, I'm pretty sure that the inscriber is, is side sensitive. So for example, I don't think that we could put all of these in here. Yeah, I think inserting into the side only inserts into the middle slot. I think if we wanted to fully automate this, we would have to have the processors going in at either the top or bottom, and then the silicon going in again at the top or bottom, because you can do this the other way around. You can put this in here and this in here, and that does still work, but uh, we'd have to have pipes on, on all three sides in order to make that actually viable. For now, though, we can just have the redstone go in automatically and then just shift click in these. It's still fairly fast. Okay, so I've made a bunch of, or a couple at least, of engineering processes and logic processes, as well as one calculation processor. Uh, so that should hopefully give us the ability to get started here with AE2. So the first thing we're going to need is the crafting terminal. This is um, kind of the, the core piece of uh, functionality that we're going to use at least. Um, for this, we do need an illumination panel. That does require some quartz glass. Uh, I'll make a bit of this because I think we're going to need it. A lot of items from AE2 do require the quartz glass. It's just Surtis Quartz Dust and Glass. You can make Surtis Quartz by grinding down the Surtis Quartz Crystals, but we already have a bunch. Um, I don't know if that's from our mob farm or from mining the ores, but we have like 512 of it, so I'm not going to complain. Once we have the glass, we can then get a formation core and an annihilation core. The formation core and annihilation core both do require uh, Fluix Dust, uh, we could crush the Flukes crystal we have, but given that we do not have a crusher, I am instead going to go ahead and just quickly charge up two more of these, grab two more nether quartz along with two more redstone, and uh, we can just drop those into our pool of water downstairs, and that's going to get us a bunch of Flux dust. Fantastic. That should allow us to craft both a formation core, and an Annihilation Core, which are very similar recipes. They just use different kinds of quartz at the end there. And then once we have that, I think we have everything to make the regular old. Oh, did I not craft the... Oh, I did not craft the Illumination Panel. That's fine. We should have what it takes. We do indeed. Then we can craft the regular uh, ME Terminal, this one right here. Uh, this would allow you to view what's in your system, but not craft, um, which in my opinion makes it somewhat useless. But uh, you can also take the items out, but you can't craft with them, which is not ideal. If you want to upgrade it to the ME Crafting Terminal, which I would heavily recommend, we just need one crafting table and one calculation processor, and boom, we have the terminal. Nice. So next up, we need the ME Drive. This one is not too bad. We do, however, need our first lot of uh, Fluix cables. These are made with Fluix crystals and quartz fiber. Quartz fiber made with the Surtis Quartz Dust and glass. Uh, glass we do not have, and sand we have very little of. We could definitely do with uh, getting some more sand. Um, I will go and check to see if we're banking up on sand over with our material stoneworks factory. We are fantastic. Look at that. So we can siphon off some of that sand, drop it in here and do a little bit of accelerating. We can then use that to make our first batch of quartz fiber and thereby also our first lot of Fluix cable. That should allow us to make the ME drive. It totally does. And again, for now, let's whack this down maybe right about here. Uh, ideally facing forward. I'm also not too sure why it's so dark at the front there, but either way, uh, let's drop down a cable on top of it. Um, again, bit of a visual glitch there, but um, much like the network cable from Simple Storage Networks, the Fluix cable is what's going to allow us to connect up all of our blocks and devices in Applied Energistics 2. We can then slap the ME crafting terminal on top of that, like so, and that's fixed the uh, visual glitch there. So now this is openable, but not working. So, in order for this to work, um, I believe we can do two things. We could make an energy acceptor. That would allow us to provide energy to this system, but the controller also works as an energy acceptor, and whilst we don't technically need one just yet from a channel perspective, we are going to need one in order to get power to this. Uh, the only thing we're missing is some sky stone, and once again, for that, we just need four regular stone, along with some lithium that we're getting from our end stone. Give those a right click and then give these guys a quick smelt, at which point we should then be able to make our controller. We can, fantastic. Again, temporarily, I'll drop this here. We're definitely gonna end up moving that um, fairly shortly, but uh, just to get an idea of whether or not this is uh, gonna work, let's also grab a flux point to provide this guy with some power. Boom and boom. 
that should come online if we have enough power to feed it, which it looks like we do. There we go. It is online. You'll know it's online when it starts flashing these rainbow colors. And so now the final piece of the puzzle of getting this very basic system online is a storage cell. So storage cells are the same as uh, disks from refined storage, but they work a little differently in that you can see here that each different type of storage cell can hold a certain number of bytes and a certain number of types. So the number of bytes used refers to the number of items that can be stored. So a 1K ME storage cell can hold up to 1024 items, but it can only hold up to 63 different types of items. So unlike with refined storage, in refined storage, I bookmark this cell here and type in disk. Refined storage has its 1K disk. This can hold 1000 uh, items, maybe 1024, but it can hold 1,000 of any number of items, right? So you could have one of 1,000 different items, and in the refined storage system, that would be fine. However, with AE2, with the storage cell, you can't do that. You can only have 1,000 of 63 different items. So once you get to 63 items, even if you only have one of each, you would then need a second cell if you wanted to put a 64th item in, if that makes sense, if it's a 64th different item. And by different items, I mean like diamond is one item, iron is one item, gold is one item. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different items. You can have 63 different items per cell, but then if you want to have more than that, you need more cells. So that does make AE2 a little bit more complicated and a little bit more finagly to work with, but for the time being, Let's go ahead and see if we can't make, a, at the very least, a 1K storage cell. For that, we need redstone, we need Certus Quartz, we need a logic processor, easy enough. Uh, we can then craft that with some redstone, iron, and quartz glass to get us our first 1K cell, and we can drop that in here. And so now, we can go ahead and drop items into the system. So this basically works like a really big chest that we can access from one location. Pretty cool stuff. And ideally, what we're probably going to do is uh, try and get enough disks to move all of the items from all of our chests into the uh, the ME drive here. Uh, you can see already we've put 23 different types of items in, as you can see here, and we have put a total of 203 items in. If I take my pickaxe and my hatchet out, that's going to go down to 21 different types of items. You get the idea. So the final thing we need to do if we want to actually get our storage drawer um, accessible is make the ME storage bus. For that, we're going to need two regular Minecraft pistons. We're going to craft one of those into a sticky piston, and we're going to also require an ME interface. This requires yet another formation and annihilation call, although thankfully these are made in sets of two, so we should have one of each left over. We totally do. Boom and boom, there's our ME storage bus. And so now all we need to do is put that down on our draw controller. Now at the moment, that's going to be a little awkward. Um, I don't think we really need this guy, the storage request table. I think we can get rid of this. Obviously, the idea is going to be to fully get rid of the simple storage network fairly soon. But uh, if we do this, that's going to put the storage bus on the draw controller. And then now all we need to do is craft up enough Fluix cable to connect this storage bus to any item on our main network. We are completely out of Fluix crystals here. However, we do have some Fluix dust left, and so we can uh, go ahead and quickly do a little bit of Fluix seed crafting. And especially with our time in a bottle, we should be able to hopefully make this fairly quick, at which point we can make eight more cable, and then that should be enough to let us do something like this. And as soon as this is connected, we can open this up, and we can see that we now have access to everything in our storage drawers. Now, I like to set mine to sort by number of items, and I like to set it to descending. So we have the item we have the most of at the top, and the item that we have the least of at the bottom. I also like to turn uh, auto sort uh, on, auto focus on, sorry. That means that as soon as I open this terminal uh, and I start typing, it's already going. Uh, if you have auto focus off, which is like this, uh, then you have to click on the bar up here with your mouse before you can start typing. I prefer to just have um, auto focus on, and I don't think that I won't remember search on. I think that's fine. I'm also not a huge fan of the JEI synchronized search, but if you like that, you can turn uh, use JEI search on. And at that point, when you type in down here, it's also going to do the same in your terminal. Personally, not my cup of tea, but if you want to use it, it's there. I like autofocus on and uh, for now, at least remember search off. And yeah, this is a very basic applied energistics to system. So next time we'll come back I do want to craft up a, a wireless crafting terminal, this guy right here. That's going to allow us to replace our storage remote, this one right here, our crafting remote, 
right here from Simple Storage Networks uh, and allow us to access this screen wirelessly, which is ideal and it's going to be necessary um, if we get if we're going to get rid of the um, Simple Storage system. And going forward, we can also start to look at things like the molecular assemblers to allow us to start to auto craft. Uh, auto crafting is going to be huge for us. Stuff like netherite ingots, which we make a lot of, and are not too difficult, but it'd be nice if we could just request that they be made for us, uh, or that we have a certain amount on tap at all times, as opposed to constantly having to craft them over and over and over again. Uh, the little things like andesite casing, having to make that every single time is a little tedious. Having that kind of stuff automated and requestable by the AE2 system is going to make life so much easier going forward. Uh, we'll also potentially fairly soon look at getting a better source of power going, because right now we're probably getting close to the limits of our Enderium generator here. Uh, this guy probably doesn't use too much power, but as we expand and build out a bigger a2 network it is going to start to use even more power so we'll probably look at getting some more power fairly uh, fairly soon and we'll also start to look at heading to space see what that offers i assume we're going to need uh, these ingots here in order to craft some of the end of file uh, recipes that we need to actually finish the game and yeah i think fairly soon chat we're going to be able to pivot towards looking at what we need in order to make the um the finished program right there's a lot of stuff here there's a ways to go until then but at this point, we can start looking at what it is we're going to need to get here and start building kind of systems and kind of reverse engineering which systems we're going to have to set up to get the right resources to get to the end of the pack. But those are all problems for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.